Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, those things we didn't get to during the course of the show today. And this is going to be our last Aftercast for a while. Just a reminder, uh, I'm out with a work trip next week, and then uh, we have one day. We actually have to go to a class together, uh, like the whole company is doing this DISC assessment. And you've probably done something like this, or Myers-Briggs at your company, a lot of companies do that. And we're doing the DISC assessment. But it was not enough to just do a regular straight-up business DISC assessment. Mm. We're doing the biblical DISC assessment. Oh, which is that? It oh, is, yeah. Actually- I didn't realize that we were doing a biblical the one. Jesus yeah, one. we're we're Jesus juke in the uh, disc That's test. Funny. So it'll be interesting to see. I do like this kind of stuff, and and I don't mind like the days when you go and you do this. It's it's a day off of the stress of the normal show, and so it's kind of fun to sit in there and see people, you know differently and so i don't mind doing these things but we have to do that on thursday but it'll be interesting to see the disc assessment from a biblical perspective and then starting friday then i'm out the whole next week for like my vacation so hey how did i do today rock by the way about what about what Oh, the coffee? Yeah, you did do? fantastic. Thank you. You I, did really good. I, I forgot that you had it. There you go. I got a and caffeinated coffee. Yeah, I finished it the last break. Uh, Duncan's my favorite, but Betty's like, don't make me regret getting you this. Don't make me regret That's getting true. you this. And I, and, I handled it And you it very made well. me forget that you even had it, so that is big There you deal. go. I'm in, I'm in rare form it's, today. It's, it's very encouraging for your next cup of caffeinated coffee. I know. Oh, it felt so good. You're too. helping your own self there. That's true. Uh, all right, so let's dive into some stuff here. Uh, neither of you, I'm assuming, watched the State of the Union last night? No. No. I watched a very little bit of it. Um, I, I got to see the part where Marjorie Taylor Greene was heckling Biden. Yeah. And, like, to me, and, like, she you know, wore a MAGA hat and things like that. And she kind of broke the rules. And so did, so did some other people. They wore different T-shirts and stuff. I just, like, I am not a Biden fan by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I think that there still has to be reverence for the office. If you hold the office, you should be able to do the State of the Union and you get that moment to say what you want to say. And it might not seem fair to the challenger, but that's the way it goes, you know. And I think there needs to be a respect for the office because she's heckling him. And then people just throughout the thing, people yelling and agree, not agreeing and stuff. And it turns into this cacophony of noises that you can't even really hear. And it just it loses it loses some decorum. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they sh- I think the president should sit in the Oval Office and just do it that way. Maybe yeah. he's not allowed to. I don't know. I thought the State of the Union's. I remember Reagan, I think, doing them from the Oval Office in the past. I don't think you have to have it as an open forum, but I could be totally wrong on that. Um, But I love how left-leaning ABC News is. Here's the first paragraph on their article for the State of the Union last night. President Joe Biden delivers an alternately alternately fiery and forceful State of the Union address uh, on Thursday night. Uh, underwent what may or sorry Thursday night under what may have been the brightest spotlight of the year so far. Just as he gears up for the general election campaign against former President Donald Trump. But I love alternately fiery and forceful. Mm. Basically, the fireworks came from him being heckled, and I think he gets praised for finding his way to the stage and staying awake. <laughs> Like that is fiery and forceful in their mind, and and I loved how like he's bashing Republicans for blocking the border bill, and now pretending like I'm trying to fix this, and you're keeping me from fixing it. I've just wanted to fix it all along, and it's you guys, and it's just so whiny and old man whiny. And the reality is, it's like no, you destroyed the border, and now you're like, oh, I got to do something because it's a black eye for you, and then Kamala behind him standing up, yay, you're amazing. Oh, 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 I'm going to pretend he doesn't hate me. Uh, and so I just, I found myself, I watched, oh I'm this worked up and I watched 10 minutes. Like yeah. I got that worked up about it in 10 minutes and I, it was driving me absolutely nuts. Because especially like blaming the Republicans for the border and even Democratic states like New York that once were like, man, I love there was a bunch of clips of them saying, we've got enough room for everybody and America's great and we have the Statue of Liberty and come on, bring your tired, your poor. And now New York is like, we have no more room. Like, we have people in hotels. There's a new pilot program to give immigrants uh, debit cards, basically, where they can go shop for things. And, like, we have homeless people and poor people in our country Mm -hmm. that you didn't do that for. And so now you're doing that while you're putting people up in hotels. It's lunacy what they have done. And they're expecting 
they're, and they're blaming Republicans for it. It's like, no, you had four years to fix what you said was a disaster last time with Trump. And you, you know, they're caging kids. And you, you said all these things and then took four years to do absolutely nothing but make it worse. It's crazy. And I apologize if you're a Democrat and you're on that side and you think I'm totally wrong. Uh, start a podcast, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear about it. Don't email me. Don't text me because the truth is I'm getting ready to go on vacation and I do not care. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, that was that. I remember back in the day on the radio, we used to cover more of the stuff and we would talk more politically about things, but we can't do that on the radio because everybody gets bent and then I spend hours fighting people and I hate that. Um, and so we're not going to do that. Uh, here's a weird story. Uh, Rupert Murdoch, who ran Fox Media, he's getting engaged for the sixth, did I say that right? Sixth. No. There you go. Sixth time. Wow. I spit over everything. <laughs> the sixth time, uh, and he's 92 years old. Oh. 92, getting engaged, in, never too late, How I guess. How did he meet her? I don't know. Oh. Uh, but here's the, here's the playing a guessing game. How old is his fiance? What do you think? If he's what? 92. I, he's 92. 92. I, I am hoping I, she's over 60. No, I don't think she's any older than 35. <laughs> yeah, 27. Um, no, I'm kidding. She, no, oh. I'm kidding. Betty Ross see, face. But I don't think I would have been. But no one's shocked. Uh, yeah. How about, I am. How about 39? 39. Wow. 39. Where are you going, it's a crazy Rock? world. 35. Yeah. No. Well, I have good news for what you said, Rock. You uh, are going to feel good about this. She is a respectable 40. 66. Okay. 60? So still a 26-year difference. Yeah. Okay, so good job, Gavin. Wait, how She's old? still doing bad. I was going to get the calculator. What was it? 26. 26. 26 years between them. So that means that he was 26 when she, she was, was born. born. So yeah. we're just talking wow. about yeah. degrees of mm. old. Like yeah, she that's at true. 66, which yeah. again, I, not no offense to people who are like yeah. in their aged 60 years, yeah. but like you would say 66 is like your years of being golden you years. Know, you're, you know, gr- you're a grandparent. Your grandkids are getting up there in age 66 too. 66 doesn't see, I'm, seem out of bounds. No. I mean, that's still a big age gap. And, and you're in your 90s. That's but rough. 92 is death's doorstep. <laughs> but he's loaded. <laughs> like, so she'll get like, you know, a bunch of money out of this. But like, 66 isn't horrible. You know, 76 would have been better, but he's like, look, I'm wealthy. I'm not doing that. The options are probably uh, smaller mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah, yeah. 72, ooh, boy. But but you know what? Uh, okay. 92. But 92. But, Love but is... six time, too. That tells you a little bit. Yeah. I, th- I, th- yeah. I do think that's sad when you see people that have been married so many times. Like, I get having one and you're like, oop, that was a mistake and I, I, I didn't see the red flags. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But then the second one, even that one, you're like, oh, maybe I, but by the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you got a pattern and you have to look at your pattern. Like, am I choosing the wrong people? You know, cause it can't always just be them. You can't, you can't have six marriages fail and it be like, yeah, I just unlucky. I keep picking the wrong people. It's all them. Yeah, like you know? you're the common denominator. It's like the, exactly. It's like the dad character from You've Got Mail, where yeah. uh, Tom Hanks' dad is just like, you know, splits up with his one of his wives, gets on his boat, and he's like, I'll find someone here in a few months. Yeah. And then we'll move on. I think there are people that are like serial daters or serial engagers because they can't be alone Mm -hmm. you know and that's a i mean that's a dangerous thing too because then you make this string of bad decisions because you can't be alone i had a friend whose daughter was like that all through high school or whatever she would break up with somebody and was in a relationship within the next couple weeks Mm -hmm. you know because she struggled with being alone and being okay by herself you know and and my daughter didn't date during mm-hmm. high school and she was uh better off being alone you yeah. know and uh you know and she she really she really only dated she dated a couple people in college for a few weeks uh but then she only dated anybody seriously which was uh Spencer and I if, if I'm a betting man yeah. I'm gonna say they end up getting married uh at least that's how it looks right now because they're like making life decisions too about like jobs and moving and they're basing their decisions on the other person and that's that's a little a little scary but I, I I see it as being really serious so I'm not like freaked out by it because mm-hmm. um, I think that's the path they're headed down which I love the kid I think he's a good kid you know and stuff so and we've talked about it before uh, it, it's interesting they they were Haley was texting me the other day about a faith conversation they were having and she's like hey real quick i need this uh some insight here I'm like oh okay cool so I'm, i like that they're having those conversations yeah. mm-hmm. you know so anyway uh what do you got lady rock i think a lot of us 
Uh, I did notice your coffee coming in there. Uh, <laughs> no, that was, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what'd you get better? <laughs> um, Don't email me. I'm going yeah, on vacation. Like, Woof. Yeah. Okay. Fire uh, I think a lot of us would <laughs> like to have more money, but some of us are just in different tax brackets, and some of us find ourselves in the lower end, and you're thinking to yourself, well, how can I be richer? Well, I've got the scoop for you. So, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, successful people are our key to getting more success. <laughs> okay. So if we hang out with rich people, yep. we're more likely to invest in stock, save our money, and learn the tips and tricks to get our money to work for us. I was living in Los Angeles. Well, I was in uh, Orange County in California. And so I was living in a very wealthy area. I was working at Radio Disney. I was making a few hundred grand a year. Like, I was doing really well. Like, I mean, I, I think we would all agree that's good money, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so that's... Uh, would you call that rich? I don't know. Nah, it's well, tough, it's tough. Well, it's tough because yeah, like if you took that same like account and put it in Tennessee or yeah. any other place, it I would feel like that guy's rich. But like housing California. wasn't as bad then. Like oh, housing back sure. then, my house that I bought for four hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, that was it. I mean, that's like a nothing house here in Tennessee now. Yeah. That house <laughs> sold later for a million dollars. You know, yeah. and it was the same house. So like I I was at a good time. So anyway, like so decent money. But I go and I join this tennis club and I play tennis every week. The golf club, I only joined the tennis club because the golf club, you had to pay $38,000 to join just up front, just because. Then you still had to pay like greens fees and all this other stuff. And I had, and so I meet all these guys that they're paying that and not thinking twice about it. I'm meeting guys that are making literally $100,000 a week with their businesses, you know, and they're like, that's rich, you know? I think if you're not blinking at, it's it just it, you almost judge it based on like things you don't blink at. I right. don't blink at going to see a movie, you know, on uh, over the weekend. Right, because you're richer than some people, and that's different than the people who don't blink at right. thirty eight thousand dollar golf course. Yeah, fees. Yeah, and which so I would like, love to do. I was in there with all of these people, and you get comparative. You know, like I thought I was doing well, and then I'm watching this doctor who makes a ton of cash, and I'm, then I'm thinking I'm not doing as well. But to your point, Rock, about being around money. You start getting in with people that are doing well, and you get investment tips and mm-hmm. things like that, and ways to make more money. You know, See and, things you want. Too. Yeah, and so I found that, like, because I wasn't investing a bunch, and then when I got in with these people, it's kind of like when you're a product of your friends, positive or negative. As a kid, it's the same thing in that thing. So if you're around people that aren't wasting money on dumb things, mm-hmm. then you will you'll aspire to some of that. If you're around people that are like, hey, let's go out and buy another boat, even though I don't have enough money for the one I got. Not, then you tend to do that kind of dumb stuff, you know, and stuff. So I like I benefited from being around people that had tons more money than me. And you might be asking yourself, well, where do I find these friends? Well, uh, we find researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, they found out that the places where the so where the most socioeconomically diverse uh, groups are are typically public places like libraries and parks. Oh, interesting! Because okay. I would never go to a library. But also, Walker Hayes <laughs> had it right when he sang "Fancy Like." Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a date night. Got that Bourbon Street stay with the Oreo. Please tell me this is so not where you meet influential and powerful people. So it turns out that Olive Garden and Applebee's. And also um, the Bloom and Onion place. Uh, oh, Outback. Outback. That's my are favorite. Are three of the best places to meet rich people because I do not believe that about affordable Applebee's. chain restaurants and a lot of families come together. And so I believe that about um, Outback because it's expensive and about uh, Olive Garden because they've lost their minds. Olive Garden thinks that you are eating in Italy when you go <laughs> there and it's not great food and they treat you like you're eating in Italy price wise. It is crazy expensive. It's like now twenty dollars for a chicken parmesan or something insane like that. Mm. Uh, and and it's and then they want mediocre. Tip. Yeah, and then it's mediocre at best, you know. And so I get it. Like you got to be a little bit more well off to eat at Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't go there anymore. But if you're splurging, maybe it's a birthday or an anniversary, and yeah. you're like, well. You know, that's my favorite place. Well, take advantage of the situation. Look at your surroundings. Yeah. You might be seeing some people that look like they're wearing, uh, I don't Shoes. know, Lululemon. And you're like, <laughs> hey, that's, okay. that's my kind of person. Yeah. When you see Lululemon on someone, do you think, oh, man, that person's got money? Or do you think, what an idiot? 
Oh. Idiot. Okay, oh, I, I wow. figured you would think that. Yeah, because, because you can funny. get the same. You can get the same thing for a lot less. You're paying for the brand. You're I, not paying for the. I know you would never clothing. do it, and you you have uh, leggings that you wear to work. Mm-hmm. There's one. To, I've toyed with the idea of, for like, for Christmas or your birthday, I'm buying you a, a thing of Lululemons mm-hmm. and you wearing them just to see if there is a difference. And mm-hmm. like, would you be like, "Oh my gosh, these! I get it now. These are amazing." Or mm-hmm. would you be like, "This is ridiculous"? Because yeah. I know you would never spend the money on. Nope. It's kind of like when Zach worked here on the show. Uh, I bought Zach a pair of uh, skinny jeans because uh, he wore these horribly big leg jeans. He still has them and still wears them. You know those are back in style. Skinny so jeans? He, no, the wide leg jeans. Oh, yeah, For wide leg. So you are out popular. of style, sir. Don't and care. Zach is. Don't He's care. In style. I'm trying to find the skinniest leg pants. I always look at the legs of pants when I go. Like I'll go to Costco. They have like good guy, not, not jeans, but like activewear pants. And the first thing I do is when I see the price, I'm like, yep. And then I flip them over and I Check look at the leg, leg, the bottom of the leg, the cuff to see how wide it is. You can or always stretchy. tell. Do you, you can think tell. that if we, if we compared the level of material between your jeans and yeah. Marty, your wife's jeans, yeah. would there be more material on your wife's oh, jeans. Oh, a billion 100%. percent. Yeah. So you, In the hips alone. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> Why do you have to say that? I'm just kidding. No, you're not. Alone. No, no. You oh, can't just I do have tiny hips. It. I do. I'm, I'm very small in the hip area. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> but it, I'm like, going to text her. No, don't, please. Uh, well, then don't say it. I didn't mean to. You, yes, you, because <laughs> anytime, anytime we talk about pant sizes, you got to say something. Well, because she has giant leg pants. Like, she loves giant leg pants. And they basically start at the hip, and they go straight down, and they don't taper at all. That's in style. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Like, she has, every once in a while, she'll pick a pair of pants that are wide leg that aren't Y'all horrible. Y'all should switch and see if you could fit in each other's jeans. Oh, I could fit two of me in hers. Not because of the hips, because of the you legs. Because of the legs. Because stop. she picks giant leg pants. Uh-huh. That's why. Tough. Yeah. She, I, she, she could wear my jeans, though, I think. Probably. Yeah. You do. I have a wider the, waist. Yeah, because you like to tow the... Good, good job. Thank you. Good job. He's but you do. You toe the line himself. between like blood circulation and Yeah, she doesn't like style. it. She's like, I don't like things touching my skin. Yeah, you if know? you look it up sometime if in potties, look up Dwight Yoakam. That's the kind of jeans Wally wants. Dwight or Yoakam or something? Neil McCoy. Neil McCoy. These are both 90s country stars, country music stars, and people made fun that their jeans looked painted on. Oh, do they really? And they do. I That's didn't know Wally that. That's what Wally wants. I did. Yeah, that, for he me. He wants his painted on. I do. I like I like him. I like him tight. I guess it's like the for I me like it's like wearing tight. leggings almost, you know. <laughs> Your form of leggings. I'm trying to think like I'm looking at mine right now and like yeah, they're tight on they're tightish around my ankles. There's still a gap. Like I mean, it's not like the like the emo kid skinny jeans. I don't wear those. Um, but I like them tapered. I like all my pants to be tapered down. I have to buy a suit for um a wedding in July, and I found one that I liked the jacket, but the pant legs were too wide. And so I'm looking for like European cut suits that have uh, the tapered leg and maybe even the short tapered leg. Because if I buy the short tapered leg, you know how guys do that and it's above their ankle? Uh-huh. If I buy that because I have short legs, it'll probably fit me just perfect that's, and I won't yeah. have to have it altered. <laughs> that's my biggest pet peeve with because I like to do the, the cuffed ankles thing, yeah. which I don't like. I don't wear a bunch of jeans these days anymore. Um, just He's got I, old man style. I just like khakis a Likes little bit more, which I don't know, State Farm. And I, <laughs> I like to like cuff them, but any pant I buy for like the waist size, and then they don't go below that 30 length. Yeah. For most, like I, I never find 28, but I am a 28 like, oh, leg. Oh, leg? Oh, yeah. For the leg. And so when I get the 30, the 30 itself still kind of cups like the bottom, it cups my heel. Yeah. Which is just such a bummer. Yeah. I I always do 33 30s is, is my jean size. But oh, Rock tried on, thir- she bought 13 pairs of jeans to find the one that yeah. she liked. I forget how many. It did you keep any easy. or did all 13 no, go back? I, all of them went back. That still was so crazy. You ended up buying like one or two new pairs, but yeah. out of all of the things yeah, you, you tried no on. Bottoms. Those are old. I was so invested in in her, like I was sending her pictures of jeans ago. from Target and, yeah. <laughs> and Costco. And I just gave up. I'm like, here's some options for you, Rob. Because it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. It's horrible. All right. Well, do you got any birthdays? I do. Let's do them. Huzzah. We have a lot because I'm going to cover all the ones that we Woo. need to cover since Wally's going to be out. Okay. 
Okay, so we're starting with Melody to her mother, Sylvia. She's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Yay, Sylvia. Sylvia. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Melissa, the other show, Wally Show historian, wishing her niece, Nori, a happy birthday. She's nice. celebrating her first birthday tomorrow. She loves Coco Melon, especially the character JJ. Ooh. Wheels on the bus, Baby Shark being read to and walking around the house and making noise. There you go. I love Happy all birthday, those things, too. Happy birthday, Nori. That's a cute name. It is. Uh, then we've got Valerie, a.k.a. V-Power. <laughs> uh, she's celebrating a birthday on the 10th. Happy early birthday. We've got Kathleen wishing her little sister Natalie a happy early birthday. She's turning 16 on the 12th and she's the most generous person. I know she is an incredible sister and I love her so much. She loves to play tennis, reading, crochet, and being with her loved ones. David wants to wish Cherie, his mother, a happy birthday, saying she, along with my dad, raised me and my two brothers and homeschooled us from kindergarten oh, wow. to 12th grade. Wow. Ooh. More power to you, Cherie. Uh, Avery wants to wish her brother Aiden a happy early Oof, birthday. That sounds like 14th. Hayden. Oh, <laughs> said he's an awesome brother. And then we've got Amelia. She's celebrating a birthday on the 17th. Happy early birthday, Amelia. She said, I love to hear and play the guitar. Nice. Now, we've got some questions from Melissa, and she's got one for each of us. Oh, okay. exciting. So I'm going to go first with mine. Okay. Uh, her for, hers for me is Betty Rock. Hypothetical Hayden has a cat. What would you name that cat? Ah. If it's a boy, I would name it Victor, as in he's victorious oh, because okay. his dad is victorious right. in oh, my no. eyes. No. If it's a girl Absolutely. cat, I'm going to name it Victoria okay. because once again, her father is a victor in my eyes. He okay. is victorious despite the circumstances that his dad has dealt him he is still prevailing i would name it elvis because that cat would be dead to me uh <laughs> just like hayden <laughs> <laughs> okay gavin would you let hypothetical hayden babysit your baby probably not yeah <gasps> I wouldn't then you know if if i let that happen you know, I'm I'm in Wally's bad graces yeah. at that point because I let oh. his son near my kid, and you know he's not going to be good at it. Like he's yeah. going to forget. Like <laughs> doesn't feel well, maybe like because you didn't teach him how. I didn't have the time. I, I, <laughs> oh, I, you're an the absent cats father in the now. Cradle no, in the silver spoon. it's not that I'm an absent Little father. Boy blue and the man in the moon. Sometimes you have to make tough choices. You have to make choices <laughs> as to which kid you invest in, which kid has earning potential, and even if that's a theater degree, <laughs> you chose the theater degree. kid. <laughs> that should tell you how bad Hayden is. I picked a theater degree. kid. Kid. How come you couldn't just have a good engineering kid? Yeah, or exactly. Where's I mean, your, he went to love. a trade school. Yeah, for the love, Haley. I begged you, uh, please go to school, be a scientist and a biologist, and and work with penguins or dolphins. That's all I asked you to do, and you did not. Now Daddy, I'm mad at Haley. Have to sing. You don't understand, Daddy. Oh. And Hayden are so misunderstood. I might switch places. <laughs> okay, finally, Wally. Yes. What would your favorite? Father son moment with <laughs> hypothetical Hayden B. Oh, so good. Okay, you think about those father daughter oh, moments. Man. Sure, that you've had I've had with many Haley, of them. Yeah, and they're and they're they're ones that bring you warmness to the heart. Yeah. They make you tear up a little bit when yeah. you think about them. But with hypothetical Hayden, what's your it. favorite father son? I know moment? it. When okay. he moved out at fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> When you the, let him stay till he was 14? That's I figured I had to uh, give him somewhat of a help, a head start, and then he went to live with his uh, uncle. Uh, his uncle. Yeah, his uncle. So he's living with his uncle in Florida, mm. and uh, they might start an airbrush t-shirt business together. We're not sure. Um, but it, Either way, you don't care. Don't care. But it seems like a good a good idea, at least. That's better it's, than the, the hermit crab thing. Oh, that's, well, he was going to spray paint the hermit crab shells. Yeah, so he can- It's kind of a side hustle right. with the main hustle. Yeah. So uh, I hope heart. I hope I hope they're happy. Did you help him move out at fourteen? No, uh -uh. At fourteen. No, Did I miss that? This, yeah, at fourteen. Yeah. What in the world? Yeah, that this, was his best memory. This is this will be my favorite part of this. Is like there was this guy named Phil Hendry that used to do a radio show, and he did all these fake characters, and he said, "I do the show for the ten percent of people that don't get it." And he's like, because 90% of the people knew what he was doing, were in on the joke, and he would say these outrageous, outlandish things, because 10% of the people didn't know it was a joke, and they would go nuts on him, and that's what made it funny, because mm -hmm. then he would read all that. Mm -hmm. So, for me, 
this whole hypothetical Hayden thing, I think is so funny because there'll be somebody that doesn't hear any of that and mm-hmm. they just think I'm talking about my real son that I made move out at 14 <laughs> because I hate him. And like they're like, they're going to have this distorted picture of me. Thanks to you, Betty. <laughs> Uh, because you challenge me each time to be worse and worse of a person with this, to outworse yeah. you. Yeah. And like, there's somebody that's going to be like, they're going to call our bosses who are in another state one day and be like, do you know what's happening on this aftercast? Your morning show guy yeah. doesn't even like his own child. I am going to have to stand before. And I am going to get up there yeah. and I'm going to say, you are right, sir. <laughs> you are right. He does not like his own child. What I'm going to have to answer to our CEO on this yes, one day. Yes, you are. And I will be right there. Yeah. So. Anyway, egging well, it on. There you go. All right. So, like we said, no aftercast for a while. I Wally apologize. Wally is going on a trip with hypothetical Hayden. Mm-mm. Bro trip. No, <laughs> I'm not. Trip. I'm not even Bro taking trip. authentic yeah, yeah. Haley. Yeah, authentic. authentic. <laughs> My <laughs> wife almost buckled too. She was like, "Hey." Um, cause we're going, we, we have another, we plan our trips out like a year in advance a lot of times now because of schedules and everything. Oh, for- <laughs> and so we, um, we have a trip. Like, we have, like, Disney Vacation Club, and so we can go, we're going to go to Hawaii, and we're doing it, like, on the cheap because of this. And so, um, we have this trip planned for August or October, I forget when. But then my wife almost buckled the other day. Mm. Oh, She's dude. like, uh. um, hey, just, I don't know, I mean, if Haley gets married, this might be our last, like, trip we could take <gasps> oh with her. Oh my gosh, you can't let that happen. I know, and she, and I'm, and, and, and this is where she became Hayden to me. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no, she's fine. And when she gets married, she can take trips with yeah, uh, her can, husband, yeah. and they can go with us. His, his mom is a travel agent, she'll get them good deals too. And it's like, I don't feel the responsibility to make the last trip with my adult daughter at 25 years old, you know, and doesn't live with me anymore. Like, I don't feel like I need to do that. You stand? Did you? You stood your ground? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I will say that, like, I was sitting there and I'm, like, agreeing with it in my -hmm. my heart, this, like, whole sentiment. Yeah. And then I remember that my folks treated us to the Hawaii trip last year because they were like, well, it's, you know, the last trip before you have kids. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I could see, like, if I had, if... Is, it, is the See, door closed? There he goes. Is He's the slowly door. No, no, no. Yeah, where, this is where he stands on the hill and then yeah. slowly falls off. Is it locked or is no, it revolved? No, what happened was, is Marty and Haley had always talked about going to Alani together. Like, they wanted to go. And it was their thing. And I, and so, originally, we were planning the trip and we were going to take Haley. But then Haley goes and breaks the contract and goes with Spencer's family mm-hmm. and goes to Alani first Without Marty and me, and, and did so she, did she already like something do that? Yeah. Yeah. that already like did happen. Hayden would it do. was what Hayden oh, would do, yes. and so she goes. She's the worst. I know, and so I now I'm like, well, she ruined that. Like, so now you, you I, I'm like Marty, you don't have any, you like, uh, like skin in the game here. You don't have any onus to take her now, and so we can just go and have it be a, a fun vacation for us. And because honestly, man, like I'm not a big fan of sharing a hotel room with my 25 <laughs> year old daughter anymore. She's Adult. Yeah, yeah, and she understands that there are bathroom issues, and I, I and I don't want her to be around. I don't want to turn the water on yeah, every time. Because then I, yeah, like I have to then monitor myself and wait till she's somewhere else, you know, to use the restroom because I have bathroom issues, you know, like. <laughs> I do like I have this thing like I I don't even like my wife being in the same room like it's horrible like hotels are horrible uh, and so I anyway love a hotel. I yeah like I I oh man there are times oh, there gosh. are times where I'll be there and this is too much information oh my but gosh. we'll be traveling and I'll literally just be like sorry <laughs> I've been there. I you just have, and my wife's like, I know it's not a big deal. I'm like, it's a big deal. Can you go somewhere? <laughs> oh my god! Real quick, I want I want you to choose bet- uh, the title of this yes. aftercast. Is it? It's between I have bathroom issues, right? That's pretty good. Or I'm small in the hip area. Oh uh, wow! Uh, go with I have bathroom issues, please. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to bring Marty in on. No, it. not at all. I, uh, she does not listen to the aftercast, and and, and like Giselle, her cousin who I love, uh, listens to the aftercast. I, That's not what he. Set off the no, air, that Giselle. is what I said. I love me some Giselle. So Giselle, <laughs> Giselle please who? do not tell Marty to listen to this aftercast because I said something dumb accidentally. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't. And, and don't tell her what was in. Stop it! You are killing me, Rock. Okay. <laughs> You're the one that said it. No, stop. I okay. am speaking for Hayden. You have hurt <laughs> Hayden, and so you have hurt me. You are about to become Hayden to me. <laughs> So, and that's the last My thing you need here. Come true. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for your aftercast. And as always, thanks for being a potty.
Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.